Our keynote speaker, if there's anybody that's a testimony to understanding how to keep your mind focused on the right thing, is the person that's about to take the stage. I know for a fact that this event was put together with the excitement of two things. One was the Nobody's Perfect film screen, which is coming up. But the other was to hear Derek Simmons speak. And a lot of you want to hear Derek Simmons talk about breaking into the show business. But let me tell you something, that is like this much of who Derek Simmons is. And it's funny to me because when we talk about Derek, people think about the performing arts industry. But what they don't get is that Derek is so much more than an artist. Derek is an example of success. And it just so happens that he chose performing arts to be successful in. But guess what? If he wanted to herd cows for a living, he'd be the most successful cow herder there is. If he decided he was going to start a janitorial business and he was going to clean buildings for a living, he would be the Derek Simmons of the janitorial business. <laughs> and that's because very early on, Derek had to be faced with some of those adversities that TJ's talking about. And he had to gain an understanding as to what it's going to take to be successful. And all the way along the line, I've had the blessing now to know Derek for 16 years, which is crazy to think that, I, that we've known each other for 16 years. And I have never, ever, ever once in the whole 16 years of our relationship heard him murmur anything ever other than what he's about to do, where he's about to go, and what's about to happen. And scary enough, Half the things he says happen quicker than what he says. Yes. So as you guys get ready to take on the experience of Derek Simmons, I don't want you sitting here just like, oh, I can't wait to get my tips about breaking into the show business, because some of you guys aren't even here for that. I want you guys to listen to a person who set big dreams at the age of 10 years old. Big dreams at 10. He said, I'm going to be a, a star. I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to dedicate my life to it. Went to school, disciplined himself to do the things that he needed to do, and through all the setbacks, the no's, the maybes, the whatevers, kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing. I'm going to save his credentials for, for when I introduce him before the film. But I tell you something, if I stood up here right now and named all the things that Derek has done on TV and on film, we might as well go home. We wouldn't even get to the film because the list is too long. I was looking at the list, highlighting certain ones. I'm like, I guess I'll talk about these. Because if I name all of them, we'll be here all night. Well, then, once he got acting down, he decided to do stunts. Once he got stunts down, he said, well, why not become a writer? Well, once he became a writer, he said, well, if I'm going to write it, why not direct it? Well, heck, if I'm going to direct it, why not produce it? Well, if I'm going to produce it, I might as well edit it too. <laughs> At least the first one he did. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, why not? I never forget the first night I went. To, I was at his house in New York, and he was down in the basement. He was working. He was doing something. I said, D, what are you doing? He said, I'm editing the movie. I said, D, you ain't telling me you were no editor. He said, I'm working on it. <laughs> But I want you guys listening to Derek Simmons because he is a living example of what can be accomplished if you do what Larry says, if you do what Curtis says, if you do what Mitch says, if you do what TJ says. The end result of it is Derek Simmons. Let's give him a big round of applause.
So I showed back up the next day at the callback with a picture of me and my brother. I'm young, because I don't know if it's a headshot. You know? <laughs> then I showed up, and they laughed at me, and they were like, no, that's not a picture. This is a picture, 8 by 10. So I was like, oh, okay, okay. Got booked the commercial. We're shooting the commercial. They said, uh, do you want to join SAG? And I said, SAG? What's SAG? They were like, no, they said, are you in SAG? I said, SAG? What, what's SAG? They said, well, if you don't know what it is, you're not in it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Shot the commercial. In the commercial, they said, do you want to join SAG? And I'm young. I'm like, well, how much does it cost? <laughs> They said $650. I said, $650? Do you know how many pair of sneakers I can buy for $650? And they were like, you know, I didn't tell them that, but I was thinking, that, you know, that's, that's too much money. Did the commercial, first check was $1,800. Two days of work, I was like, maybe I should join SAG. <laughs> you know? Join the union. Um, went to school, junior high school, performing arts, high school, uh, pursued it. They kept pulling me out of scenes. You know, because action scenes, you gotta have a professional stunt man. Pulling me out of scenes, um, uh, I think it was Law and Order. I did the very first episode of Law and Order. And they pulled me out of the scene, I was like, I can do my own stunts, I can do my own stunts. They said, no, we need a professional. Started working out with some stunt guys. Years later, they came up, uh, one of the stunt men came up to me and said, um, hey, do you know somebody five, six, 150 pounds, I'm 5'8". First thing I said was, yeah, I know someone, they're like, is he, in a, is he in the union, can he do this? I said, yeah, they said, what's his number? Wrote down his number, passed it on. It didn't work out with the guy. They called me back 15 minutes later, they said, um, listen, that guy you recommended, he was perfect for it, but he couldn't do it. So we're gonna hire you to do it, we're gonna give you a break. And I was like, great. He goes, do you wanna know why we're gonna give you a break? I said, why? He said, because you just tried to help the guy. He goes, you just, you just try to help us. We came to you. We know you wanted to say, I can do it, I can do it. But you didn't. You gave us the right person. It didn't work out, so now you're the right person. Did my first stunt in a movie, and word got around. This guy's good. You know, hire him, hire him, hire him. Um, personality goes a long way in the business. You know, if you're a given person, don't change your personality. If you're nice, you know, stay nice. If you're mean, Stay mean, be, be consistent. <laughs> be consistent. <laughs> a nice person. I go back with Tim. I mean, we met on, on a uh, TV show called Oz. We were on the first season. Um, I, I'll get back to this later. I, I played a gay guy on the show. And Tim, we were in prison, and Tim was the cook. He was in prison with me. Didn't know him. He, you know, he lived uh, in different states or whatever. We started talking. Um, what happened was, one, I got beat up on the show. My brother on the show played uh, Leon for Five Heartbeats. He put a head out. He told Tim to kill the guy. So Tim, you know, poisoned the guy, whatever, with glass. And, and we've been friends ever since. Friends ever since. We kept in touch and over the years, you know, we talked about things we wanted to do. And we're doing it now. We started from the bottom. And now we're here. Right. <laughs> you know, another partner, I did, a, I did this thing out in Hawaii called uh, Bruce Willis Film. And I was the only guy from New York. And it was, uh, uh, they had 18 other stuntmen. And uh, the, the, um, when I got out there, I was so excited. I was, you know, I was excited to be working with these guys, you know. In New York, there was only three black stuntmen. In California, they, they, there's, there was much more. But I was working with 18 of them out in, California, uh, out in Hawaii. So I get out there, I get off the plane, I'm shaking everybody's hand. How you doing, Derek Simmons? Derek, Derek. Derek, glad to meet you. And they all smiled, yeah, yeah, nice to meet you, so and so. A few days later, one of the guys came up to me and said, you know, when we met you, we all hated you. I said, why? He said, because you were smiling and looked at the phone. I said, no, I'm happy, man. We out in Hawaii, we're making money. You know, I'm meeting other people in my field. You know, it was just me. And the guy said, that's why I like you. You know, because, you know, we found out that that's the way you are. You're just a happy person. It's hot as hell. He stand, he's in the back, he produced three films with me afterwards. So, you know, he became my partner. And, it, and, uh, and you know, it's destiny, I believe in destiny, you know. Um, it, like I said, if you're a good person, if it's meant to be, it's gonna happen. Um, I remember doing an audition. I, I was running late for an audition. Now normally, I hold the door for a person. You know, I, I'll go that extra mile and everything just to be nice or whatever, you know, if I can help someone. 
I help them. You come to me and say, you got a problem? I try to help if I can help. I'm not looking for money. That's my blessing. So I remember I was running late for an audition. It's 4 o'clock. I'm running into the building at 4 o'clock. I said, wow, I'm going to be late. Press to the elevator. Got in the elevator. The door's about to close. This lady was coming into the building. I was like, I'm late. I can, I can stop it. But no, nah, I, I, I act like I'm gonna, I didn't see her. So I turned my head. Door closed. I said, man, I feel bad. I'm going to the elevator. I said, dang, I feel bad. I just, I could have stopped. I could have held the elevator for her. Get into the audition. I fill out my thing, blah, blah, blah. Walk into the room. It's the cast director. She was late, too. But she looked at me. She was like, hello, elevator man. <laughs> I was like, wow, should I, should I have to do it? I didn't, I didn't book it either. But, you know, it's my destiny. That was my destiny. Time was off. And Jump Horse. I'm going to get to uh, Jump Horse. is my first movie. Uh, I, had a, I wrote the story. I had a cameraman who, who convinced me that it's easy to do a movie, man. All we got to do is just go out there. You have the equipment. You got friends who are actors. Get up, call them up, man. Let's do this movie. So I was like, okay. All right, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I said, wait a minute. I don't have an editor. Man. So the camera said, oh, I can edit your movie. I said, you know how to edit? He said, yeah, I can edit. I said, what program do you use? He said, Final Cut Pro. I said, all right, cool. I got an editor. So we start shooting this movie two weeks in. I said, hey, we got all this footage. When are you going to start editing? He goes, no, no, I'm not going to edit. I'm going to teach you how to edit. I was hurt. I didn't want to know how to edit. I didn't know how to edit. I was like, no, no, I don't want to edit my first movie. I want somebody who knows what they're doing. I want it to look right. He goes, no, 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 I'm going to teach you. He taught me how to edit. 900, 900 hours later, I knew how to edit. But, you know, I, I remember how upset I was because, you know, I felt that he, you know, tricked me. It made me a better director. I found out what I needed and what I didn't need. And when it came to the next film, Women Do It Better, everything was there for me. You know, every time I, I knew exactly how I wanted to shoot it and I knew what, you know, what I didn't need. And, and whenever people came to me and said, oh, you need this, you need this, no, no, I got it, I got it. And whenever I needed support, you know, sometimes you need that, that person to call. And, you know, when things are going down, I said, oh, man, this doesn't look like it's going to work. I called the Apollos, my partner from Hawaii. And he said, no, now you got to stick with it. Come on, we're going to do it. Just bring it across this finish line. I'll take it the rest of the way. And Women Do It Better got done. I remember casting Women Do It Better. I had this actress. Um, she was real good. Never started a movie. She was doing plays. First day of the set. We, we had a long day, she shot the scene, and I was like, man, this is going to be a good movie. This is going to be good. The next day she called me up, she goes, I can't be in your movie, I can't be in your movie, I can't finish. I said, what's wrong? She goes, well, my agent told me, she didn't have an agent when we started. She goes, my agent told me I can't do your movie because if I do it, I, I won't get to work for Disney. I was like, what do you mean? She goes, I won't be able to do Disney films. I said, this is not a porno flick, this is a comic. <laughs> you know, I work for Disney, I do a lot of Disney movies. What are you talking about? She goes, yeah, so I can't do it. Got on the phone, started calling some friends. Hey, I need an actress for this role, blah, blah, blah. I cast this lady, Dion. She's sitting right here in the back. <laughs> I cast Dion. She came in, and I didn't think anybody would do better than this woman, but she rocked the role. And I was like, wow, this is destiny. You know, what's meant to be is meant to be. She came in, she did a thing, we had a lot of fun shooting it, and, and you know, in other words, you can't let anybody stop you from doing what you really want to do. You know, pursue it, don't let anybody stop you. The editing, that was the obstacle. I got over it. I'm glad, you know, it, it really was a blessing because now all the films, I can sit down and edit, and then when I need help, I go out there and say, I can't do this. And if a guy tries to edit my film and says, Oh, I'll do it this way. And he's lazy about it. I'm sitting there watching. He doesn't know that. Wait a minute, this guy knows what he's doing. He has to really know what he's doing. So if I hire him, he's better than me. A smart man will hire someone better. You always want somebody better. You never want to be the smartest guy in the room. Never, because you can't get nothing from it. You can't learn anything from, from you know, you want to always get something out of it. Um, getting into show business. I'll just skip on that. Uh, getting into show business, first thing you need is a pitch, headshot. That's your business card. Gotta have a, gotta have a good headshot. Um, you want to send your headshot. You need classes also. Talent, talent goes a long way in the business. You need to network. Network is big. I mean, the stories I told you earlier came from networking. That's how I met Tim. That's how I met Hollis and, and all my partners, my team. 
Um, uh, surrounding yourself with the right people is going to take you a long way. So I'm going to cut right now, but find a goal. Go for it. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do it because you can. Pursue it. Don't be afraid to help people. Um, every time you help someone, you get a blessing. You don't know where it's coming from. But if you can help somebody, help them. And do what you want to do. Anything is possible. Thank you. I'm Derek Simmons.